Hello and welcome. I'm Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our election special show, Battleground 2021. Now, today was the first phase of a polling day for Assam and West Bengal Assembly elections. Voting was held in a total of 77 Assembly constituencies, 47 of them in Assam and 30 in West Bengal in this particular first phase. Now, polling booths opened at 7 a.m. and the polling time this time around was extended due to COVID pandemic. Now, in West Bengal, till 6 p.m., the poll percentage recorded was around 79.79% according to the Election Commission. And in Assam, it was around 72.14% turnout for the first phase of polling. Now, if you look at the 2016 figures for these areas, the voter turnout in West Bengal was 85.43% and that of Assam was 84.23%. Now, obviously, these figures of, uh, you know, this particular phase uh, will uh, improve further because uh, the numbers are likely to come, more numbers are likely to come in and we, may, we might have a clearer picture in a few hours as the final percentage of voting in both the states in the first phase. Now, in West Bengal, the polling was held amid tight security with the Election Commission deploying around 730 companies of uh, central forces guarding 10,288 polling booths housed in 7,061 premises. And in Assam, a total of 300 companies of security forces were deployed for the first phase in which voting took place at 11,537 polling stations across 12 districts of Upper Assam and the Northern Bank of Brahmaputra. Now, in Assam, the BJP is hoping to win a second straight term with Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal, the biggest name on the ballot today. In West Bengal, in 2016, the Thinmul Congress swept 26 of these 30 seats, which were now for today. And in Assam, the BJP had won 35 of those 47 seats in the state during 2016. We, in the next half an hour, we'll take a detailed look at what exactly happened during the day in this first phase of polling in both West Bengal and Assam, the metrics out there, and what does the poll percentage indicate. And to understand this more clearly and in a much better way, we have with us a distinguished panel of experts. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with Mr. Shrimoy Taluktar is with us uh, from Kolkata. He is senior editor, first post there. And uh, we're also joined by Deepak Tivan, another senior journalist who keeps a very close watch on uh, the developments in the northeastern region and, of, of course, Assam there as well. Welcome, both of you gentlemen. And let me begin with you, Mr. Taluktar, first. Let's look at West Bengal, the state... Uh, uh, you know, on which all eyes are focused right now. 30 seats, first phase, uh, poll percentage, somewhere around 80%. Uh, what do you make of this? I think the, the votes this time, uh, at least in the first phase, were by and large peaceful. Obviously, some sporadic incidents were uh, reported, but that is only to be expected in a state which has a very close relationship with violence and elections. So, um, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm not very surprised with the Final figures, though, I think it might go up a little more, as you rightly pointed out during the introduction. It might go up and touch the previous figures, 2016 figures. So, um, I think, and I also think that the central government, the election commission has done a pretty good job of monitoring the promises. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, the ruling Trinamool Congress government was sometimes behaving almost like the opposition in labeling allegations against uh, the, the, the poll panel. To me, uh, it, it seems to me that the poll panel was actually doing its job because usually we don't uh, see uh, the, the ruling party coming out with allegations. It's usually the opposition which levels allegations against the, the ruling party in the in the state. So I think I think there was a, 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 a to a large extent the elections were free and fair. A okay. couple of incidents did take place. Uh, I, I uh, there was one uh, case of vandalism of a car which belongs to the brother of. Uh, uh, the Nandigram candidate of BJP, Shubhendu Odhikari, his brother's car was vandalized. And I think in West Midnapur, a BJP worker was also killed. But other than that, I think the, the election commission should be applauded for conducting a largely free, uh, peaceful elections. 
Okay, okay. And then we'll, we'll go to the, you know, specifics uh, of those 30 seats, the permutation combinations and how things might turn out uh, for all those candidates whose fate has now been sealed in the EVM machines uh, on those 30 seats. But before that, let's take a quick look at Assam as well. Mr. Deepak Diwan, I'd like to bring you in here. 47 seats, first phase, upper Assam area, uh, quite significant, uh, both for BJP and Congress, because uh, it was uh, Congress's uh, hold at, uh, for almost 15 years when they were in power and uh, the BJP got uh, almost, uh, you know, a sort of a maximum number of seats uh, in, you know, in the re Assam's regions in 2016 out there. So how do you look at the polling percentage there and, and the comparison if we can have with 2016 numbers? Well, uh, Vishal, uh, first of all, I would like to tell you this, this uh, phase one is very important for BJP to retain the power and they are pretty comfortable because this uh, election in Assam is in, uh, it's a three corner contest. Apart from BJP and, uh, uh, apart from BJP, which has a ally, alliance with the uh, AGP and uh, UPP of uh, Bodo areas, the Congress has alliance with AUDF and other communist parties, etc. Then there's a third front which is uh, newly formed parties known as AJP, mm -hmm. Assam Jatiya Parishad, which is an offshoot of uh, ASU. And there's another uh, gentleman, Akhil Gogoi, who is also contesting along with this uh, uh, AJP. And they are giving challenge. They are anti-BJP as well as anti-Congress alliance. So okay. it, it has become a three-corner contest. And uh, the BJP is in very comfortable position because they will walk away with their committed votes in this fight. Because the, they, these Congress and these new newly formed alliance, new, part, new parties, they will cut each other's votes because both are having common agenda, anti-CA, etc. and all that. Okay. So it's, this is a very interesting uh, contest. It's a three-corner clear contest in uh, Assam. Okay, that's, that's quite an interesting analysis you're pointing out there, Mr. Diwan, but we'll have to wait and watch as to what exactly the voters have decided uh, for uh, those 47 seats and the remaining, uh, you know, 80-odd uh, uh, seats there in the state of Assam as well. Who will finally win uh, uh, will obviously be revealed on the 2nd of May, but uh, let's uh, switch back to West Bengal here. And Mr. Talukdar, you know, if, if you're looking at these 30 seats, uh, quite an interesting, uh, you know, uh, political uh, battle which has always been played on these 30 seats which went to poll uh, in the first phase. Uh, they were a left citadel when the left was in power. TMC sweeped in, you know, retained uh, or sort of won uh, many of these seats. But if you look at the 2019 Lok Sabha election results, then the BJP had an upper hand in, in quite a significant number of these constituencies. Uh, I think the, the elections in West Bengal has undergone sea change. Uh, from 2016. Um, so 2016 uh, probably wouldn't be the right reference point for these elections. I remember during 2016 elections, the campaigning, the, the entire discussion, the, the total political discourse revolved around by how much the TMC would win and whether the Congress and CPIM in, in Bengal, they were called Mohajot, the, the Grand Alliance, whether the Grand Alliance will be able to uh, sort of make a comeback uh, or maybe the CPM will be able to stop the erosion in its ranks. The BJP, uh, when the results came out, we all noticed that the BJP has increased it, its vote tally, but its seat share didn't go up by much. It, it got only three seats. However, it vote tally, its vote tally did go up. What we noticed in the 2019 elections, though, that there has been a total erosion of the left vote bank, and that left vote bank has almost completely shifted to the BJP. Whereas, if you look at the 2019 election, see, uh, the, the vote share of uh, BJP and TMC, you will find that the TMC... Compared to 2016, the TMC's vote share had not decreased by much. But the fact that the BJP got the amount of seats that it did was largely due to the fact that the, TM, the CPIM, or the leftist vote, from BAM, it completely shifted to RAM, as it were, as, it, as we call it in Bengal. Uh -huh. So this, this was a very interesting, very interesting change. In 2021, the fact that the BJP, and, and, I, and I think that the BJP was probably taken by surprise at, at how well it did in 2000, 2019, in 2021, they gave a substantive push and they also did a bit of social engineering. Uh, you would notice that the BJP's uh, focus this time has been on uh, 
in on building a coalition around the the subaltern uh, hindus uh, you know hindus the the, the motuas are the, the dalits and there are other other castes and communities the bjp has always is trying to stitch a grand alliance of them and and the tmc is also is, is also trying to do that in a way this time i think the calculations will change and uh, the the joker in the pack however uh, according to me would be how much the left vote will still erode or whether the left will be able to sort of hold on to its vote share a little bit if mm-hmm. the left is completely routed then it, it it might be beneficial for the bjp whereas if the left is able to hold on to its uh, vote share this time uh, things could get really interesting uh, but this is only the first phase and i think uh, it, it won't really be wise in drawing conclusions at this okay. stage okay definitely and then we're talking about the first phase itself uh, here but that's quite an interesting uh, analysis there for the state of west bengal uh, as well uh, for those 30 seats we'll talk about uh, the forthcoming phases as well obviously the first phase is over so now the focus will be on those seats uh, where the polling will take place in the second phase uh, i'll come back to you mr talukdar but uh, before that uh, mr diman you know if you're looking at the first phase uh, in the state of assam these 47 seats uh, there are quite a number of big faces you know in in this particular phase including uh, uh, the incumbent chief minister himself sarbananda sonowal contesting from uh, mazuli and and uh, some other big faces uh, from the other parties as well be it the congress or uh, other smaller parties which you mentioned there i would like to take some names for your viewers see we have cm contesting from majuli we have a speaker who's contesting from jorhat his fate would also be, is lying in the ballot box today then we have ranjit datta is a prominent face of bjp in uh, assam he is contesting from behali then we have nabak kumar dole he is uh, contesting from dhaku kuwa kha and then mr uh, jogen mohan he is uh, contesting from moti mora then we have terash gowala from dulia jan sanjay krishan from tinsukia then we have uh, agp which is the alliance of bjp there uh, acha one more important uh, one uh, lady who was the minister in congress mm-hmm. during the congress rule ajanta niyog she switched over to bjp and she is contesting from golaghat which is mm-hmm. also consider considered a important constituency then from agp we have atul bora he is contesting from bokaghat then we have keshav mahanta who is contesting from kaliabor mm-hmm. from congress we have devabrata saikya who is contesting from nazira then we have ripun bora who is the congress uh, chief in of assam he is contesting from gopur then we have bharat nara is a well known name again in assam he is contesting from nabicha then new uh, party raijor dal whose leader is akhil kogoi mm-hmm. <coughs> who is in jail at the moment he is contesting from uh, sip sagar then we have uh, assam jatiya parishad chief uh, lurin jyoti gogoi he is contesting from dulia jan and one more constituency nahar katia okay see if you look at 2016 results from these 47 constituencies bjp had got 27 agp had got 8 and congress had got 9 A- aiudf had got 2 and independent one seat out of these 47 seats in 2016 but okay. in 2019 there was a major shift and jump for in favor of bjp if you look at these 47 seats uh, votes lok sabha election 9, 2019 bjp got 40 out of it out of mm-hmm. 47 and congress got only 7 so there is a big vote bank already for bjp there now we have to see how they in cash this time again okay okay it'll be interesting uh, to see whether they are able to uh, maintain the lead uh, which they had in the 2019 lok sabha election on those uh, majority of assembly segments uh, which went to poll today and as i was saying earlier for that we'll have to wait till uh, 2nd of may but uh, let's let's look at uh, you know uh, the uh, future course of action in these two states as well uh, mr talukdar the first phase is over there might be some improvement in the poll percentage as uh, both you and me have been pointing out and we can you know uh, wait for the final election commission uh, figures to come in and that might make the poll percentage uh, you know slightly touch the previous year's figure as well now 
It's uh, the action shifts to the second phase. So if, you, if you're looking at the second phase uh, in the state of West Bengal, what are we looking at in terms of uh, the constituencies, the area, the significance and the big names as well? Uh, there is uh, there is a reason why the the West Bengal elections has been broken up into so many phases. The reason primarily being the fact that the the violence has been a, a very big factor in these polls. In the second phase, and and as well as the rest of the phases, I want to make a larger point here, and 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 the point is that I, I personally think that the BJP might be, uh, 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 you know, uh, it possibly could be a victim of its own success in 2019 elections. Uh, in many of the places, in in fact, the BJP had quite a bit of struggle in putting out candidates for 294 seats this time, and. Uh, uh, we noticed that uh, many of the candidates who had walked over from the BJP and came uh, walked over from the TMC uh, into BJP, they had been given tickets, and okay. that created a lot of that created a lot of disgruntlement among the long-time party workers who are not, you know, ready to accept them because they have been fighting against these candidates for a very long time. Definitely, that's, so that's quite a natural process, phase, uh, you know, expected yes. in all major political parties during the poll time. But the problem is that. The BJP is, is usually a very structured and, and its organization is usually extremely strong. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of organizational structure, BJP is probably second to none. In West Bengal, however, I believe that their success has been so significant in 2019 that their expectations on the BJP for the party itself and also people who support the party, uh, for them, from for them, the BJP's expectation that you know Bengal is a very low frank hanging fruit and it is only just a matter of time before it is plucked, that could be a bit of a problem. Because what has happened here in, in, in West Bengal is that in many of the many of the places, the BJP's organizational structure is not very strong yet, and they okay. have had to lean heavily on the on 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 the uh, candidates who have come in from other parties. However, the TMC had been uh, experiencing a lot of uh, disgruntlement from people, the anti-incumbency factor, the fact that you know the natural disaster that happened in in Bengal, the Amphan cyclone, and there were huge disgruntlement about. The way the 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 relief work was distributed. So, on the ground, many TMC leaders who are facing a lot of heat from their constituencies, and they could sense the fact that you know the party might not give them a ticket this time. Many of them had actually walked over to the BJP this time because they wanted to improve their personal prospects. The BJP welcomed them because the BJP's own structure was not very strong. So, I think this is something which has been underplayed in these elections, and it could make a factor in the second phase. Um, and, and you know, if you could look at the seats that that are there in the offer, you will mm -hmm. find that many of the, the, the in many of these places also, we find many of many of these uh, people who have walked out from the TMC and came into the BJP, they will be contesting. And and I uh, I, I will I will really reserve my uh, uh, judgment on that. I I'm, I don't want to stick my neck out, but I believe that it, it the contest would be closer than many imagine. And okay. uh, the, the general perception that. The general perception that the media in India has, the national media in India has, that BJP is uh, winning in West Bengal is just a matter of time. It, it you know, it, it uh, I, I would reserve my judgment on that because I, I, I think that there's uh, a lot to happen uh, still. Um, okay. BJP might eventually win in Bengal. Eventually, it might win in Bengal, but I'm not very really sure whether this time would be this this edition of it would be the right. Uh, the, the, that occasion, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of not very really sure about that. Okay, okay, fair, fair enough. Uh, you know, and and all of us will have to reserve those comments because it's uh, the voters who are in action right now. The first phase of polling has happened in the state of West Bengal. Six more phases are uh, to go before uh, uh, you know the voters' decision is uh, uh, announced on second of May, and that is when we'll get to know whether. The challenger, which is BJP, has managed to wrest the state from uh, the incumbent, which is TMC. But one more question before I move on to, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Deepak Devan uh, on Assam. Uh, Mr. Talukdar, if you're looking at, uh, you know, the issues here on uh, for, for the, uh, you know, next phase specifically, and if we look at uh, what happened in the first phase, the, these, uh, these 30 seats... Uh, these were mostly tribal dominated areas, uh, you know, issues related to uh, uh, infrastructure in tribal areas were uh, somehow considered to be uh, really important on the ground. What's your take on uh, what can be expected in the next phase? I believe that this is uh, a theme, uh, this is a motif which will run through the entire elections, maybe not in the urban pockets, maybe not in, 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 the, in the cities, but in the next phase as well, you will find that these infrastructural issues uh, will come to the fore. Um, uh, this uh, 
one of one of the things which has not been spoken about too much in these elections is the is is the way the TMC uh, is is the way the CPM and the Congress have joined hands together and they have uh, they have tied up with the ISF which is uh, which has got its own vote bank. The ruling party is a little uh, uh, you know uncomfortable with that because it feels that uh, the the fact that uh, it has it, you know it, it expected a monopoly on the on the minority Muslim votes which. Uh, it's about 30% of the total electorate. Mm -hmm. And I think that ISF's uh, introduction into this melee has made things a little bit difficult for TMC. I think uh, specifically in the, in the second phase, that could be a big factor to watch out for. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and also the fact that many, uh, uh, the, the social coalition and the social engineering that I was talking about, the caste and, 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 uh, and, and the very complex algorithm of the subaltern, the caste and the different communities, uh, you'll find a more granular campaigning next in the, in the next phase, where mm -hmm. the very very specific issues relating to a different caste and communities are are touched upon and spoken of. And uh, BJP, what the BJP brings to the table is, of course, a lot of professionalism in in campaigning. And uh, I find that many of the other opposition parties are also catching up to it. So it will okay. be interesting to see in what way that pans out. Okay, definitely. It'll be really interesting to see and that's uh, something which you pointed out very right out there. Well-oiled election machinery which uh, the challenger BJP has out there. How and uh, whether it will uh, deliver kind of results. We'll have to wait uh, once again uh, till 2nd of May. A uh, quick uh, question uh, from, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Deepak Diwan here on Assam. Uh, what to expect in the remaining two phases? Because the state of Assam uh, is going to poll in three phases. The first phase is done uh, with 47 seats, which went to poll today. Uh, two more phases left. Uh, how do you see kind of issues there, Mr. Diwan? If you could uh, quickly wrap that up for us. See, the next phase is on uh, April 1st. And uh, the areas include the border areas, where BJP has a new alliance partner. Earlier, there was a BPF, which was partner of BJP, but this time now it is uh, UPPL, uh, United People's Pub uh, Party Liberal, mm -hmm. UPPL. You know, this consists of the people, those who la last uh, Bodo Accord was signed by these people. In their student leader, Pramod Bodo, is heading this party. So they have formed alliance with BJP and they are contesting. They have, what, uh, 12 to 13 seats if they can, uh, you know, get it in the region. And uh, I think, uh, the, and then there are, there are very prominent people again in the second phase. If you have time, I would like to name some of them. Okay. See, see former Congress Minister Gautam Roy, who joined BJP, he is contesting from uh, Koti Gora area. Okay. And his son uh, and daughter-in-law, Daisy Roy, are contesting as independent from Udhar Bond and Ali, uh, Algapur, respectively. Okay. And then former Deputy Speaker Dilip Kumar Paul, who resigned from BJP, as he was denied ticket, he's also contesting as independent from Silchar. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, Rajya Sabha member Mr. Biswajit Daimari, Daimari, who left BPF and joined BJP, is contesting from... Uh, 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 I don't have the constituency's name. Okay. Uh, and, and another former Assam Saitya Prabha, uh, Sabha uh, President Parmananda Rajbongshi are contesting, for, uh, these contesting as a, B, uh, you know, BJP candidate now. Okay. Okay. Those are, uh, those are very, uh, you know, uh, important names. They are in the second phase out there, which you're pointing out, Mr. Diwan. And we'll have a elaborate discussion on uh, what to expect in the second phase of uh, elections in both Assam and West Bengal as well. But uh, uh, for this uh, particular episode, focusing on uh, the first phase of uh, polls there, which uh, took place in these two states. Uh, that's all we have. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Deepak Tiwan, as well as Mr. Sandeep Takhtar, for uh, sharing uh, your views and insights on uh, what actually has happened on the ground, how it might translate into what kind of result for all the political players involved there, and what more to expect uh, in the coming phases. We'll come back to you with uh, all the details uh, concerning uh, other states as well as uh, the next phases of election in these two states as well. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.